Okay, so on my computer, I'm going to be setting this up with Active Directory. What I'm going to do is run DC promo. And it's going to be a domain controller for a new domain and a new forest. Full domain name is going to be corp.int. Internal disjointed namespace. Right now, what it's trying to do is trying to test its uh, DNS to see if that actually exists out on the network. Uh, then here's the uh, NetBIOS name. Now, before I continue, I want to, which I should have done first, is test my IP address configuration. And that's going to be the control panel. Network connections. TCP IP. It's using DHCP. And DHCP will not work if you're trying to do Active Directory. Domain controllers need to have a static IP address. So I'm going to use a static IP address of and no DNS. Actually, what I could do is use it myself. Because by installing Active Directory, making this a domain controller, it has to install a DNS server on this as well. Now I have a static IP address. I'm going to leave the NetBIOS name Corp just because it makes the most sense based on my domain name. And if I'm going to try to configure my workstations and my network not to use this, but it's there in case it has to use it. What did you use for that? You just made I just made one up for my own network, a 10 10 10 network, a private network. The subnet mask? 24 bit mask. So the first three are 10. I did my, this is just an example, okay? So here it shows the database folder. Uh, this is where the actual Active Directory database, that's what Active Directory is essentially, it's just a database stored and the database gets synchronized or replicated to other domain controllers that's stored as well in the C drive and Windows folder and NTDS folder. Okay, it looks like someone else is doing this too on the network. Don't use that same IP on the same network right now, please. Okay. The uh, log folder is a directory where it's going to store the log because everything that Windows does during the whole running process of Active Directory is going to be logged. Everything. Which is good because that's the best way to troubleshoot problems. So we have next. And this is where the sysfile. Sysfile is where files that are going to be replicated like login scripts, things like that are going to be replicated to different sites. This is where the, the, the information is going to be stored in the sysfile folder. And this is going to be an actual shared folder. So for, by default, I only have a C drive. We're going to leave everything on the C drive. Here it says, well, it tried to figure out what the DNS name was, and it wasn't able to. So you can select, I have corrected the problem, perform DNS.analysis again, which is not true. We want this to actually install and configure DNS for us. That is the safest way to do this for the very first time because then we'll set up all the different um, TCP and UDP and RCP uh, records in DNS that are required for Active Directory to work. So leave it so it will install and configure DNS on this server. We want permissions compatible with only Windows 2000 or higher or above. We do not worry about older versions like Windows NT. So we're going to leave it where permissions are compatible. It's a little more secure. This is if I want to restore Active Directory. So if everything failed and I need to do a restore, I put the Windows 2003 disk in the computer, boot it up, and it's going to want me to enter the restore password in. That's what this is. So this should be not your password for your administrator account, this is the restore password that you use during the recovery council. 
and gives me a summary, hit next, and it starts building my actual domain. Now I click finish, that is done, and restart. Okay, now Windows is starting up. Next, I'm going to go into Active Directory, Users and Computers. There's my corp domain. I'm going to create my three OUs. LA Dallas and New York City. Now that my OUs are created, I just for an example, I in New York City, I can also create another OU called computers and then another OU called users so this becomes a way I can organize next I'm going to set up my oops, sites and services in here it has a default site first name site we're going to rename this to Port. Actually, we name it to Dallas because Dallas is the actual site. And we're going to create another new site and we're going to call it LA. And another new site, we'll call it New York City. Oops. Got to select IP. There we go. Okay, what is warning me on that message is to create the subnets. Select IP as the default <coughs> transport. The transport is what it's going to use to actually do the replication. So now I have to create subnets. Okay, new subnets and the 10.10.10.0. .10 .10 .10 this is my 24-bit subnet. This is going to be applied to our corporate site is in Dallas. I'm going to create another new subnet, 10.10.11. And this is going to be LA in this example. 10.10.12. This is going to be assigned to New York City. So now that I have the subnets assigned, I want to make sure that Dallas has the server 01, which is this server, assigned to it. And it shows that 101010 10, 10 is a subnet for Dallas. Now if I were to create another subnet, Let's say Dallas has two subnets because, for your examples, for our labs, we're going to be having multiple subnets. About nine. So the nine is going to be also applied to Dallas. So you can see you can have multiple subnets be assigned to multiple sites, or to a single site. Sorry, multiple subnets to a single site. 
So the 9 and 10 subnets are assigned to the Dallas site. And that's it. So we set up after directory OUs for the different locations and then sites to ensure replication slows down between the different subnets because we're going over WAN connection. As you can see, there are no servers in the other sites because we have not installed them, which is fine. But making sure that our server is at the corporate location, which is in Dallas.